Hello and welcome to a new episode in our Alt Systems Quick Tip series. I'm Sven, consultant and trainer at AgentBase, and today I'm going to talk about the roles in Alt Systems and how to leverage them. So let's start with uh, where to find the roles. You have to go to your logic tab, and then you have this folder roles in here. And uh, you always have this anonymous and registered role. The anonymous role is basically everyone who hasn't logged in, so anonymous unknown guest users. And the registered role is for everyone who has logged in, so registered users. If you want to have some more specific roles, you can just add them. For example, here I added a demo admin and demo employee. So you just right click on the roles folder and then you can say add roles. And if we expand this, we can see here we've got some actions we can use. And every action needs a user ID to know uh, on which user it should perform these actions. And they basically do what the name says. So the check action checks if, it, if the user has the role. And then it gives out this Boolean if uh, the user has a role or not. Uh, the grant action grants a role for the user, and the revoke action revokes, revokes the role again. So um, with these actions, we can um, manipulate the user stuff here in Service Studio or in our app. We can also do this here on the user management web page. Uh, we saw this one in the last video. So if you're interested in that, or maybe if you think I'm skipping uh, some steps, maybe take a look at the last video, then it should be clearer. So let's take, for, for example, here our demo user. Log in again. So you can see this user doesn't have any roles. So here you can just search for roles. Let's say we search for the demo admin and demo employee. And then we'll, when we click add, now we granted the user the role. We can also do that for a bunch of users with this group feature. So let's say we've got this requester group. And if we have a bunch of users here in this group, we can give them all a role of just uh, basically assigning the role here to this group. Um, also, if you add a new user to a group, they automatically uh, get all the roles that are associated with this group. And lastly, we can look at our application list. And here we can see all the new rules, uh, roles we added. So for example, I added the demo admin and demo employee role, as you saw earlier. And here we can see all the users that have some roles in our app. If we click on those roles, we can also see which users have this role. Um, I also have the role because in your own environment, you have all the roles. So, Probably it's a little more interesting how to do this here in Service Studio. So you can use this action here, for example, in server actions. I built this check role action, for example. And here I use these check admin role and check employee role actions. I have the user ID and an input. And then after I uh, perform these actions, I just assign the respective outputs to my output parameters, as you can see here. And so this uh, action gets a user ID and then as an output tells you, is this user an admin or an employee or maybe both? And I've used this here on my screen. So I just took a data action, performed this check roles uh, action with the user that is currently logged in. And with that, I, have, I get these two output parameters. And then with those parameters, for example, I can filter this with an if. And here the first if checks as a person admin. So it has admin true. And if yes, this icon gets shown. If not, I've got a second if that checks, then is the person an employee? If yes, this icon or the text gets shown. And if uh, the person is neither, uh, you get this icon. Um, the most simple thing you can do with roles is if I just click on the screen, you can see here, you can just use these checkboxes to give users access to a screen or not. So as you can see here, um, users would have to be logged in because the anonymous role isn't checked. But as soon as you log in, you have this registered role, and then you can see the screen. So let's see how this one looks in the app itself. So what I did here, um, I did some demo logins for an admin and employee user. Basically, just uh, copied the logic behind this uh, login button and put in the credentials for my admin and employee. I have here as a user, as an admin user and here an employee user. So if I click on admin, 
I see this user an admin, it's an admin user, so this works. If I click on the employee, I see that's an employee. And if I click here on this sample user from all systems, which is neither an admin nor an employee, I see this one here. Um, what I could also do is just, for example, take this container, take this visible property, and depending on which role a user has, again, with this admin and, uh, has admin and has employee output from the data action, just hide the whole container. So that's how you make uh, certain elements of a screen visible or not to certain users. Um, then, of course, you probably also want to know how to use the grant and revoke actions. So let's go back to the app and log in with my own user. And then we go to the user management, this uh, list you probably saw in the last one. And here I added some new logic in the user details screen. So we now have these two check marks. And with those, I can directly grant new users roles or also existing users or revoke them. So let's click on myself, for example. And here you can see um, I have both um, roles and I could revoke them now. You can take a look at our demo user, which we had earlier. So he's an admin and that's exactly what we assigned here, the demo admin role. So let's say we don't want him to be an admin, but we want him to be an employee. Say save. And if we update this, we see now he's an employee. So let's so show you how this works. Um, again, I use a data agent. And now I'm not taking as, an, uh, as the currently logged in user as an input, but here I take this user ID, which is the input of the screen. So basically the user I clicked on. And then I fill these two local variables, which are just the variables here for those two checkboxes, as you see here. Um, so what I have to do then is when I click save, I have to trigger these revoke or grant actions. So I updated my user creator update action, as you can see here. So firstly, I check here the user that wants to update um, another user or create a new user. Is he or she an admin? So basically, uh, in this example here, where I was editing the users, my action checks, am I an admin? And it does that here just with the check admin role action and then with my user ID. And if that's not the case, I get an exception. If I am an admin, I just do the normal create update action. And then after that, I've got these two input parameters, is admin and is employee. And that's basically just has the checkbox been uh, checked or not. So here, if ad is admin is true. So if the checkbox is checked, I do the grant demo admin uh, action with the user ID I get here as an input. And if not, I uh, trigger the revoke action. And then after that, I do the same with, with employee. Mm. So one more thing you might be curious about, if a person is already an admin and I do the grant admin action, or if it's not an admin and do the revoke action, um, will something happen? No, it will not. So you won't get an error or something, just nothing happens. So that's why you can just do it like that. You don't have to necessarily uh, do an if to check is the person already an admin or not. You can just do it this way and it works fine. And that's the basics about the, the roles and how to use them. Uh, maybe see you in the next one.